Hi folks, thanks for joining me today. Uh, in this session, we'll be touching on uh, ChatGPT capabilities in Power Apps, and I'll be doing that through a demonstration of how you can get started. This is by no means a, a full end-to-end -end or a how-to, uh, but it should give you a, a good idea and, and a good few steps on where you can go to, to get started. With this specific um, demonstration, I'll be touching primarily on the uh, text capabilities but I'll do a, a demo of the the image tech capabilities as well so in the first instance I want to take you through a canvas app basic canvas app and if you have have experience with this previously this is a generally a pretty pretty straightforward thing to, to get up and running some basic uh, uh, objects on the page buttons gallery some text as well and the idea behind this, I want to make this as, as user friendly as possible, regardless of what your experience is. This will give you the, the building blocks to, to get started. In my first instance, I'm going to go through and demonstrate how the app works. So with this, I want to, I have an idea. So maybe I want to run a, a, a marketing campaign um, and maybe that is going to be used to sell houses. So marketing campaign for um, local housing. Um, and maybe we look at first time buyers for local housing, uh, first time buyers. And if we generate those steps, what's going to happen here is we are making an API call. Now, APIs, if you're not familiar with them, can, you know, seem a bit daunting, but really it's just a, a set of steps uh, that's going to help us get some information. And with this, it's all very well documented by OpenAI. So you can see in this instance, we have our steps. So it's gone through, we've identified a target audience, know your goals, choose your channel, develop high quality content, monitor and optimize. Um, and you, you can define this further. Uh, and, that, and this is potentially just say a first run. So what you could do is look at putting automated steps in here on, on how you could handle this next. And if you like this idea, give it a save and I'll save it within the app. So for example, we searched up document management processes earlier on. If I click onto that, I can see uh, what those steps were to implement that idea. One of the other features we have is an image generator. So in this instance, uh, we can put in a prompt and that's gonna go away and generate an image for us. So if we go with mince pies, if I generate an image, it's doing a similar API call. However, it's looking at a different model and that different model is being used to generate those images. So in this instance, it's gone away and generated some images of mince pies. And I have this option to download if I so wish. Now, the way these work is essentially it's going to take a, an input, and this is what we refer to as a prompt, and this is a standard text input field. Although there's some, some uh, power effects in here, don't, don't worry about that too much, because all that's doing is emptying the field for us if it's a brand new record, uh, and uh, ultimately going through and pre-selecting this if we're choosing an existing record. But essentially, if we put in our text here, that will be assigned a value, and we can use that value to pass through into our uh, API call. When we go to generate steps, we're then taking that information for the text input one, and we're submitting that as part of a prompt. And each one of these lines represents a different parameter that's been passed through to, th with our API call. And in this instance, you can see there are two options. So one option is looking at ChatGPT AI, and the other is looking at DALI. This first one is a generative text, and the second one is, is images. Each one of these is a different parameter, and they're pretty well documented with the OpenAI uh, documentation. But what we'll do is run through how you can get this up and running and maybe not in detail of what the each of these parameters do but we'll give you an idea as to why they're configured and why they're needed in the first instance the other thing we've done here is what we call prompt engineering so in order for us to get the results that we want so in this instance we have a number of steps potentially you want to format this in a in a, as a json object or maybe you want to uh, phrase it in a slightly different way this is ensuring that we get those steps back and uh, we, they are aligned to make sure we're looking to implement whatever idea we submit. Um, you could avoid this, but the only downside is if I put in some text, it might not know what to do with that text. 
and rather than the user having to write this out every time or different variations of it, to help standardize the results that we get, we can pop in, pop in this phrase, the user doesn't need to worry about it, and we get the response that we need. Now there's a whole uh, raft of documentation around prompt engineering, and if you go to this link at the top, uh, the Microsoft Learn article that runs you through what prompt engineering is, where it'll talk through some basics, um, different components, so simple, complex, um, primary content, and, and a few examples uh, to go through. So if you are struggling to get the, the results that you're looking for, um, you can use prompt engineering to, to hopefully get, get those answers. Now, if we jump into how we make this call in the first instance, what we'll need to do is come over to our data sources. So on the left hand side here, we can see we have two. First is GPT ideas. This is a table created in Dataverse, and we can do that by going to add data and creating a new table. If you're making use of solutions, you can add that table as part of a solution. Or if you're uh, in the instance of uh, some of my colleagues, they're making use of uh, Azure DevOps and then rolling out changes uh, through release pipeline. So really, really cool, innovative way to, to bring governance um, to, to, to an organization. In this instance, we've gone for the quick and dirty approach of building a table here within, within the app itself. The second thing we have in here is ChatGPT. Now, you won't find this in your standard ad data unless you are in a region where preview functionality is available. So within the AI models, there is now a generative text AI model. Uh, however, it is in preview and only available in certain regions. And the region I'm in is, is not available. When we come to our connectors, you can see there's one called ChatGPT, and this is a custom connector. So we've had to develop this ourselves, and that sounds scarier than it is. Realistically, it's a bit of copy and pasting and creating an API key, and, and that's generally, generally pretty straightforward. So once we have these connectors set up, we can bring them into our app. And essentially, it's just then a case of calling the connector. We call an action, and I'll touch on that in a little more information in a moment, a little bit more detail in a moment, and then we have a parameters that we pass through. So if we go to Power Apps, when we are looking at hooking onto a data source of any sort, we need to have a connection, and to do that, we need to ensure we have a connector. In this instance, you can see you have your Dataverse connector, or connector here, Outlook, uh, this is Office 365 users, uh, Power Apps for makers. The, the, these are all different sources that you can hook onto, and here these are connections to those sources. In this instance, there isn't a source for ChatGPT or that or OpenAI, so we need to go away and create a custom connector. And to do so, on the left hand side here, you can go to custom connectors. If you can't see it in this list, if you go to more, you'll find a whole list here where you can pin these if you're if you're accessing them frequently. If I jump into custom connectors. I can create a new custom connector. In this case, we've already got one, which is ChatGPT. If I jump into that, this is the same screen that you see when you're creating a new custom connector. We can upload an icon, background, color, description. And in this instance, we are passing information through to the through to the host. And we'll we'll touch on that in a moment. But essentially that is part of the, the API call. When we jump into security, we need to configure an authentication type. Here, we need to create an API key. And to do that, you need an account with OpenAI. As you go into your account, you can then generate a secret. And that secret is what's used for authorization. I won't show you that in this instance, uh, but, but just kind of searching up those options will, will take you straight to that. It's a very much a case of creating uh, an account and just generating the API key. You can see here that that's passed through the authorization header. When we come to our definition, we have our actions. Our first action here is ChatGPT AI. Our second action is DALI. DALI is the image recognition, the and ChatGPT AI is generative text. With that first option, we have our general settings. These are pretty standard out of the box. However, we do need to ensure we declare an operation ID. And that operation ID is what we use here. When it comes to our request, we can import a sample. And with that sample, it will declare our headers and our body, along with the request URL. Now, a lot of this is in the OpenAI documentation. 
However, a quick, quick way of getting to this is if you go to the playground, you can see the link at the top here. You can select the model you want. And in our instance, we are using a legacy model for the ease of this tutorial. However, if you go to the chat models, there are newer ways of querying, um, quer querying through the API. In, in my instance, I've gone with uh, complete and legacy text dash da Vinci dash triple double zero three and that's our model and if i go to view code here i can see the request url we can see the uh, content type header which in this case is application json and we can set that as default in the connector we have our authorization header and that's then configured uh, as part of our uh, connection once we get that configured the key thing at this point is make sure not only do you put in your your api key but you also prefix it with bearer and then we have our body and with our body we have our different parameters where we pass through additional information jumping back into the custom connector here once we import that from a sample we get our content type where we can set that to, to default to application json and if I come back down to body, we can see we have our other uh, parameters in here, which are predetermined. You'll notice that prompt isn't predetermined because we want to pass through information to generate our, our return. We can do the same with Dali, but in this instance, the, um, the sample is different. So although we have the same content type uh, header, so which would be application JSON, the body is slightly different. So in this instance, we have N prompt and size. And again, prompt we've left, not pre-selected. Then again, there are guides online which will walk you through the image rec uh, image gen generation in a bit more detail. And I might be able to link some of those videos below. Once you have those uh, determined, you can come through and, and generate the responses. And with those responses, this is what gets returned back into the Power App. So if I jump back to ChatGPT AI, jump into our response, um, in terms of what that response is, it will return these items. And with those items, uh, we can process that within the Power App. So if I go back to Power Apps, anything that's returned is stored in the API response variable. And with the API response variable, we can then pull out specific values. Because this is technically going to return as an array of objects, we choose the first item in the array, and then we choose the text property from that object. And if I go back into my custom connectors, you can see that with that response, text is one of those properties. With that, once you're happy, you can test. And once you test, you need to ensure you have a connection. Remember, bearer, space, then your, then your um, token, then your API key. Down here, you can see some items are pre-selected. So that's what we pre-configured as part of the body. And then the prompt, you can add that in and do a test operation. Again, if I just pop in, um, hello, my friend. If I send that through as a test operation without prompt engineering, you can see it just returns, nice to see you, how are you doing? Whereas with prompt engineering, I'm passing through that previous bit of text it will actually return a more meaningful result based on what we need. Now, in terms of where you can take this, this is a very rudimentary idea. And to give you a bit of background, this has come about from uh, going on long, you know, long walks before before and after work, where I've had an idea, I've forgotten it, and I just wanted to get, that, get it written down. So what I can do now is come into here, write out my idea, and it'll give me some steps that I can, I can action and pick up once I get home. It'll even send me an email to go, Jay, don't 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 forget if you've, you've got an idea that you that you came up with earlier on. But you can take this further. So if you do want to integrate this with other systems or other processes, you could generate emails off the back of this. Um, you can actually return those results in maybe a, a JSON format and iterate through them and, and create tasks and things like planner. Um, if you want to send notifications through Teams, they, they're all options. But actually if you apply it to real business scenarios where maybe you have onboarding checklists, uh, potentially you want to evaluate content for um, maybe elements of, of plagiarism, maybe elements of bias. You could actually use this to process that and provide feedback and reviews on those documents. Speaking of documents, if you have code 
or the sort of technical configuration with the connectors that are now available in the Power Platform, you can use ChatGPT to, to go through that, evaluate those connections and even partially write documentation for you. Now with that comes challenges. And one of those things is human oversight where actually some of those results, although they may be perfectly valid to a point, you still want to go through and check to make sure there isn't, isn't bias and that the content's correct. And again, with this capability and using these connectors, um, you can leverage human agents who can then go through and review that by submitting it through the approvals capabilities within the Power Platform uh, to those users, get them to sign that off and say, yeah, that's valid. So again, you could take maybe a documentation process from you know, potentially a week down to a few minutes, uh, provide feedback automatically with human oversight and ensuring there's no bias or, or anything that's maybe um, ethically wrong with, with, with those responses. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, it's not been too much of a deep dive, but it gives you an idea of around how easy it is to set these capabilities up. If you'd like to find out more, ping me a message, um, ping, respond in the comments below. And again, uh, my LinkedIn's available on my channel. So please, please reach out if you've got any queries.